I think I was about four or five. I had always usually a pencil, pa pencil and paper in front of me um, from my mom's pushing. Uh, I had a chem come, my mother's side was a very artistic side. So she, she said, well, you know, you're probably a good artist. So she kept throwing that in front of me and I'd be drawing up the cartoons and uh, loved drawing turtles and Ghostbusters. And from there it was wrestlers. I was really into professional wrestling. So I was always into the theatrics and, and just imagination. I was always using my imagination. So I made my earliest comic books when I was young ages. So passionate about it that I often um, kept a lot of things that I should have been learning in school on the outside of my imagination. And I was just in tune to what I was doing all the time that I suffered in school. And I had my, on my report cards, it would say, draws too much in class, draws too much in class. Art class, though, would be like, Mike's excellent, or whatever, you know. So it was like it was my excelling, excelling time, and through that, so um, I did suffered a little bit on the other end. Actually, I had a break during high school in which um, I went through a new kind of birth of myself. I got really into computers, um, which actually introduced Photoshop to me at the time too. Senior year hit, and I had to take an elective. So I went back to art class, and the one I took was preparing my portfolio for college, and I really didn't even know that. So I put together artwork my senior year, and um, I applied to two local liberal arts colleges from where I was in North Jersey, and um, I got into a South Jersey school called Rowan, and I was under a small, small faculty, small part of that college with arts, and I loved every bit of it. I met great teachers that I honestly had continued to visit after class and get feedback. I was very, very into school. Junior year of college, summer home, I said to myself, I'm going to make my first book and I made a 32 page full color book in that entire summer. And uh, that, was, that was the start of it all. And once I printed that at school, it was, it was just the spawning of being a print junkie now too and loving print. It's reading so many titles so and I was spawning all these genres. I was just trying to suck in just how these guys were interpreting st uh, stories through superheroes, through slice of life, through sci-fi, anything. And um, I think that they they definitely did something to me. Um, also just my general life, my youth. I had I, I was grown up in a great place. I had strong amount of friends that were so local. We spent day after day together, had great imaginations together, made forts and wild places, and uh, we were all about our imagination. So I think that I kept using it, and I think that helped. And then um, when I got into genre storytelling with my stuff, I think it was just, yeah, a big mixture of all that and trying to keep the fun of it. I came out west in, um, October of 2009, and uh, just a couple days before my birthday. And um, I, I originally had come out here for a relationship, but it didn't end up working. So I uh, said to myself, well, if I'm going to make a living, or at least try at cartooning, this could be the place. Before I had come out, I had begun doing uh, and had the first ever roller rink art tour. Uh, in October 2008, I was at a local roller rink in my ha uh, near my house in North Jersey, and um, I was at the time making pinup roller girl drawings, and I was just pu pushing them online. And I was like, oh, I really like to get these seen a little bit more. And I was at the rink, and it dawned upon me that a roller rink makes a great venue uh, for art showcase. So I. Um, started putting together my own marketing and my own dot-com website and I called up 14 or I called up more than 14 roller rinks but I ended up getting a 14 roller rink date uh, tour together in which I was gonna bring all my roller girl drawings to either public skate sessions or ro roller derby uh, bouts. Roller Dames, my tour, became this little special part of the industry and roller rink cider um, a industry magazine that's been around for 50 years now had called me up and they said, we love your stuff and we want you to be a part of what we got going on. Could you come up with a comic strip idea? I initially came up with one pitch that they didn't felt would fit their readership too much. So 
I came around with another one that would fit their readership, which was mostly rink operators, and it was called As the Wheels Turn, and it's about a daughter and her father who are starting a roller rink from, for, from scratch. It's like the trials and tribulations of, of starting a rink. So I'd actually read this manual about starting a roller rink that they had published years before, and I kind of followed it and applied it to fictional storytelling. Great. Well, you bring a lot of energy to this. Uh, where does that come from? I don't know. I think that I'm just so excited about drawing and I'm so excited about, I think I just love life. I love people. I try to see the better side of, of everything and, and I put that into my work and I hope that it shows through the line and through the emotions I give the characters. Well, when did you uh, begin to get this idea about teaching? When, how did that begin? Well, um, I think I always just loved connecting to kids, especially. I had a wonderful summer um, at a sleepaway camp that enlightened that relationship with kids. And knowing that if I could further connect through them and in a medium like comics, that they could relate and, um, and I, could gain, I could gain knowledge or inspiration from that. Finding Venice Arts here now and being a part of um, this great nonprofit for arts and teaching now a comics instructor as, a, as an instructor has been a dream, really. And uh, we're making a comic book from, from all their imagination, and uh, it's been a blessing and beautiful. What, what do you find uh, as a teacher here? What is the biggest challenge in working with the kids? I think, I guess, um, I would have to say the biggest challenge would be to learn their learning style. To see how they see art and to see their own work and how they want to communicate their stories. Because we're dealing with storytelling, it breaks the boundaries of how they draw. So I wasn't, I wasn't too concerned about the, that element and that their level of drawing. I was more concerned about the way they wanted to craft their story and how they learned from the things that I was showing them. So if I showed them a particular way how to use a tool on Photoshop or how to draw something, I was always analyzing how they were looking at what I was doing and how they were applying it. So just try to figure out how they learn best. So that way when I come around to them in the table and look at their work over their shoulder, that I know how they're, how they're thinking about what they're going about doing and with 12 kids, it's, it, you know, it gets to be a little all over the place, but you can kind of pull some of them in their different areas to say, oh, they're definitely more a visual learner, you know, or they need, they need a little reference or something like that. Because arts is very alpha state, so a lot of these kids have that different state of getting to, into that. And whether they have to do it through looking at other artwork to build upon their imagination or, um, or to just just give them time to think and just let them let them be is something I, I, I've learned and kind of just keep analyzing, I guess, in the students. I encourage them to do their best art and draw their best and, and tell them they, they can continue that throughout their life. It's just approaching every drawing as they're making it their best drawing. And uh, I think there's nothing better than that. What's next for you? What's, what's your next challenge? I want to be an independent creator in a very niche and difficult industry to break through. So I just want to have my presence through comic shops out here in the West and hopefully uh, get them across America in some way. I love print. I definitely will always be in print. I love web comics. Web comics are really big now. Just having them on the web is, is an important presence. I am um, working on an extensive project that it is involving both my comics visuals as well as uh, live performance music. Tell me more. So, well, uh, the process or the project's called Helicopter Club, and it's about helicopter pilots. And um, these pilots are, are narrat narrators, not only through the visuals of the stories that are projected um, behind the group, but each member of the band represents their character as the pilot. With the, with the band that I'm putting together right now, we're all going to be singing our own songs and telling our own stories. So when you come and see us live, You'll be able not only to get an inside scoop through, you know, audio, but you'll be able to see these visual tales that I'm drawing and illustrating and that are fictional, but also loosely based on uh, factual information. So it's, uh, it's an exciting project.
I love comics and I love storytelling, I guess, and I will forever be doing it, whether I make money from it or not. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill.